Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm here talking with uh, David. Hey, hello. 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 Nice to meet you all. <laughs> so what, for folks that don't know who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you give us that introduction? Yeah, sure. So my name is David uh, Szukowski, and as my name is suggesting, I am from uh, Poland. I'm living currently in the north part of Poland, so really close to the Baltic Sea in the Tri-City area, uh, close to the Gdańsk city. And it is really, really nice and quite popular for the European uh, tourists. And I would recommend that place uh, to visit. It is, it is uh, nice, I would say. And uh, for me, from the technical perspective, let's say, uh, I'm active in the IT world for almost 12 years-ish. And uh, my uh, background is that I didn't finish the IT studies. I started in the management. And by the pure accident, I landed in the uh, IT world as initially the support person. So I was doing the second, third line. And that is where I started to touch the technology. And initially, I was playing with, uh, with the SharePoint. That was my like the first Microsoft uh, really huge platform and I was learning you know the classic workflows 2010 2013 info path and then with that knowledge I started to do some uh, business process automations digitalizations along the lines I was also doing a couple of the projects with the K2 Blackbird uh, the version uh, in cloud but I don't mention that too often it was not so good. <laughs> well, that's all. They've all been acquired now anyway. It's all part of yeah. the Nintex. And... Yeah, I was also doing the Nintex, a couple of the projects. But in the end, I, I made the Power Platform. And uh, shifting from the SharePoint person, I was focusing more and more on the Power Platform because it was like two and a half, maybe three years ago, when I first uh, touched that technology, I felt that it is having a lot of potential. Uh, because of this uh, connectivity between the various uh, services. And I knew that uh, there is uh, tons of the legacy stuff connected with the workflows, info paths, uh, or even some the access uh, databases. So I knew that there would be uh, a huge need in the, in the market. And uh, when I was focusing uh, on that or trying to focus, my company was not so uh, into that, but I managed to convince uh, one huge client that the Power Platform is way to go. It was so painful project, <laughs> but I learned so much. So since then, I am focusing on the, on the Power Platform. And uh, I think a year and a half ago, just uh, before uh, the whole preparation for the COVID started, I thought to myself that uh, I need to do something because I was constantly feeling the, the, the gap, the need, uh, to, to speak with the technical people and to share uh, the knowledge. Because sometimes when I was Googling for hours for some materials, I felt that uh, it is not covered from the A to Z. And I wanted to, you know, uh, at least for some people to not uh, do that uh, in, in this hard way, but to share the knowledge. And uh, with that, I started the preparation uh, to write my first uh, articles. It was quite painful, so I have my own blog. Uh, and uh, this is the 365corner.pl. Though, though it is PL, it is all in English. <laughs> so I'm trying to write a, write a blog. And along the lines, I meet a couple of uh, active people uh, in Poland. And they convinced me that I should give it a try in uh, speaking at the conference. Because they felt that, that I know the stuff or, or two. And uh, since then, it was like the, my first and the last in-person conference. Mm. But since then, I was participating in quite a lot of conferences across the whole globe. Because during the, the COVID, it was a huge opportunity for me to travel almost everywhere in, in the world. So I was trying you know, to speak as many and where I can. <laughs> well, yeah, let me ask you, just interesting, a couple of points that you made. Um, I mean, one, uh, so about the conference and your first time speaking, because I know that that is a, it's a really difficult thing for a lot of people to do. And I was actually just speaking to another brand new MVP, Melissa Houghton, who's down in Melbourne, Australia, about how she's been involved with 
uh, a, a group that does uh, like to, uh, to identify new upcoming speakers and train oh. them on the process, like uh, speaking itself, you know, so all different skills levels, but have that common need to know like how to take the fear out of presenting live. Did you get any of that kind of training? Is that have you had other experience with the public speaking? What was that like for you? Yeah, so I didn't have such a training. I think this is, uh, in general, the, the awesome idea that uh, people are doing uh, something like that because for uh, many people, it is so stressful that they have the knowledge and the tons of the knowledge, but when it is uh, uh, the moment when you need to speak, interact, then they are just closing this, uh, themselves. So it is quite hard, but uh, I would say that my... Uh, Marjorie and I started a years, a years ago because I was uh, dancing and I'm still keeping uh, dancing the break dancing, uh, b-boying. So, you know, it will be part of the Olympics at the Paris 2024. So mm -hmm. I'm still active dancer. And that experience with all of these e events, uh, competitions, and you know that you need to face uh, the opponents. And in many cases, this opponent is stronger than you. Mm -hmm. And you need to, you know, uh, break yourself from from the fear to opposite or to to ten, uh, dance against him it helped me a lot so when i was uh, speaking and uh, looking at the people it was a little bit like a part of the b-boy exchange and i was so used to that that i had a lot of fun really uh, i hope that everyone will have such an experience like i did because uh, my first event it was great just great <laughs> So is it, is it your guidance that when you're speaking live, you focus on one person as the audience as that they're your op opponent? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just uh, convinced that uh, you should uh, catch the, the contact with as many people uh, as, as you can. So to interest them and, and to catch their attention. And if you are starting to get, uh, uh, in some sense, the, the feedback, because the eyes and, and our facial uh, expression can uh, say us a lot, then you know if, if your session is going into a good way or your set is just bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, one thing that I always recommend to people that are just starting out too is that in your own work group, um, or, or if you're working, if you're an independent, you're a shy person, an introvert, but and, uh, and working from home, find some friends that will be on the line and give the presentation to them, walk through that and record it and go through that experience a couple different times that you have somebody who can provide real time interaction. Uh, and it, it is often, especially with us doing so much online, especially the last year, year and a half. Um, yeah. It's so much, it's different when there is a live audience versus you just recording yourself. But if you do that and that recorded, you, I find that I speak more naturally when I have even one other person on the line yeah. and that, that can participate and ask questions than if I'm just recording something with just myself. Yeah, so for sure, uh, you touched the two aspects that for my first session, I was uh, really prepared hardcore because I had a couple of the checks with uh, my manager. And then uh, I had uh, the dry run with my uh, whole team. Uh, they gave me the awesome feed feedback, uh, which I incorporated in my presentation. So at the day of the conference, I was so ready. I was so prepared that everyone were like, you know, polishing the presentation, checking the laptops. And I was like only waiting for the moment when I can start. And uh, secondly, the recordings and um, lack of the interaction with people, it was really hard for me because at the first session where I didn't have any interaction, I ended up uh, too quick. I rushed the things because uh, I was a little bit scared that there is no reaction. So I didn't know what people are thinking. And uh, the fact uh, that it gave me such a hard lesson, uh, after it, I was much more prepared that I knew that I can slow down and it is not dependent on the re reaction of the people. Right. But it is also a hard experience. Yeah, it definitely is. Well, one other thing, it's just uh, interesting that you brought up in kind of your history is, is working as in the non-technical space and then kind of back in there. And uh, and so it's actually, it's not surprising to see somebody that's like you're, so you're a brand new, just a, a month and a half into the MVP yeah. program uh, within the business application side of things. But generally, uh, I mean, there's a lot of technical people that have that you know, expertise, but you see a lot of people that come from the business side into this this technical arena 
I think this is a, and maybe you have some advice for people that don't think that they're technical enough to go and speak on some of these, these topics, even though a lot of these people that are in these roles, like I come from a project management background. Okay. So my, my experience with technology was very much kind of a, a, a method, a, a, a method, a methodology a, approach, a framework to um, to uh, delivering of projects. And so I would bring that experience where somebody who was a developer who was very technical would have on the same technology, a completely different perspective, what they would share around that and, and advice for that, that, that technology. So I would think that somebody that is a coder, an engineer talking about business applications and building might be diff very different from somebody that started as a technical writer, business analyst, found their yeah. way into power platform. It maybe is focused more on the, not that a developer can't be focused on the customer experience, but again, on the business end versus the technical end of things. So what, what's your experience with that? Yeah, so I, I uh, to be honest with my background, I, I struggled for, for a long time because I felt that not knowing about the databases or coding is like uh, what I'm doing here constantly. That was my question for the first couple of years. But after uh, so long time and after I experienced so many projects, and now I think that my uh, whole experience as the package is my advantage that I don't know exactly, uh, you know, straight up uh, coding, because like you were saying, it is a different perspective. And I'm speaking with many people and uh, I'm thinking that uh, with, the, with the power platform and all of the capabilities, the key is the understanding of the process. So if you are focusing on the uh, business value, which you will deliver with your solution, it, uh, it's not important if you are like a, a first line worker or if you are a teacher in the school or if you are just a county or I don't know if you are doing totally different uh, stuff, but you are the expert in uh, this uh, area in, in the process. And by uh, being a little bit stubborn and uh, allow yourself to fail a lot of times, you will get to the awesome result, which Technically, maybe not perfect, like a person who can code the stuff, but it will be much closer to the business value, which is important and which is like a lens for you while you're doing the work. So uh, in the case of the Power Platform, I would say to people that just go for it. Mm -hmm. It can be uh, hard, but it will be much easier than the development. And it will give you so much satisfaction in the end that one, you learn a lot, you increase your chance for a better future, and you resolve potential challenges connected uh, with your needs, with your business value. Mm -hmm. And you can support your team with what you just did, because most likely some tasks, repetitive actions can be shared across the team. So you are becoming like a superhero in your company. So why not to try? <laughs> right. Well, and that's the other thing is, is not be afraid that, hey, that you, there are some great um, bloggers, some great MVPs that are out there that provide excellent uh, content. Yeah, um, yeah. But not be shy to share your perspective on that same topic, um, your experiences with that. Because uh, you know, I had this argument years ago with a with a fellow MVP who was arguing. It was very technical. Was arguing that um, the this topic had been written about and covered by a couple of these experts leading voices out in the community. And that why would anybody waste their time writing about speaking on where like the answer was provided uh, for this. And my, my response to that is like, well, that's from a tech that may be true from a technical and architecture standpoint. But mm -hmm. the business application and the consequences of that and the planning needed before you get to the solution and the effects afterwards for onboarding, for adoption and engagement, and, and, and which could actually change the design, the architecture of the product. If you're not looking at what comes before, what goes yeah. after, all those things, but uh, uh, perspectives based on industry perspectives based on business users versus partners versus, you know, within the supply chain, you know, people that are actually working with this component. I mean, all of those different perspectives, um, write about those things, write about, uh, you know, point to that 
that that article, that leading article, those those other experts. But there's still plenty to go and share. And uh, and then even if what you wrote were uh, uh, you know a, a complete overlap to something else that existed out there, I'm not talking about plagiarizing content. But you know <laughs> if if you're essentially writing about the same thing, uh, you know the the chances of people that are finding this content, they may find you and your content because of your network that may never find that other, even they could search and you might, that, that article might appear on the 50th page of Google results, Yeah, you yeah. know, whereas because of their connection and, and your network might show up within there. So my, my I guess this is my long winded uh, uh, answer for, uh, or, or, or guidance on don't be shy, get out there yeah. and share your experience um, that there's always room for more content, more expertise, more perspectives. Yeah, I think I even have one uh, my my story from for my uh, from my blogging, which can connect to that. Uh, I thought about uh, quite uh, technical and, and fancy a way to handle one bit in uh, in the Power Automate, so the mm -hmm. try catch with the do until. And I thought that if I will start uh, from presenting the this try catch without saying what is the do until, uh, it will. Uh, be wrong and I started to, to google to check like to refer people to uh, an expert who was uh, explaining what uh, is happening in that action because it is not not so easy for a beginner mm -hmm. and it occurs that there is uh, not a lot about that so I decided to write first a full explanation of the do until for people to understand that uh, that action and then move to this uh, more technical more pleasant for me <laughs> writing but in the end, this uh, simple article about one action is, uh, I think, one of my most suc successful articles ever. So uh, this is really a, a matter of the perspective because sometimes when you are uh, so deep in your uh, in your run in your daily uh, daily work, you will not think about a person who is starting the whole journey. Mm -hmm. And this is again connecting to the people which are a little bit afraid to start. A lot of around you may be at the same point and the lesson learned which you have, they will be giving them a tons of the value. So yeah. you even should to share because that will increase the velocity of the learning in your whole group. Yep, uh, agreed. I, so I have, uh, so just to kind of to that point too, is that um, uh, there's another thing that, that, that people that, you know, you and I, you know, if we're years within this space and doing what we do, we'll have a certain perspective on it. And, and, and to be honest, there are some topics that I've presented on three, four years ago, which are still valid content out there. Mm -hmm. People want to hear about, I've done it so many times. I'm not interested personally in doing <laughs> that topic anymore. I want to move on to new things and continue to grow and develop and stuff, you know, but there's still that need for that more introductory content and one of the things that i've done so i have four adult children and i've tried i've pleaded with all four of them in their careers and two of them are are off in careers they're they're past their schooling two of them are still uh, in university but i've said along your path whether it's business or technical um start writing about it blogging about it i said you won't have any readers now but as you develop that content on your learning pathway like you're going to start to develop, you're going to find people that need those introductory steps as you're learning about that. Yeah. So there are some writers that are out there, some some experts in the community who have started to do that. They're like, hey, I'm brand new. I'm looking at the power platform. What is this thing? I'm going to go and just start figuring it out. And so they kind of provide a walkthrough of their experience from the very beginning. And there's tremendous value in providing that kind of content even yeah. though you're not yet an expert on that, that technology. Yeah, yeah. This is like uh, allowing uh, ourselves to fail or to make a mistakes. Uh, it's really crucial uh, as, you know, we are living where we are living in, in this world. Uh, I am feeling that people are more and more afraid to show that they are make, making a mistakes. Uh, where we shouldn't be afraid because we are learning the most from the mistakes. It, yeah, definitely. Well, I, uh, 
I said, if you, if you don't share your mistakes, somebody else will share your mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you want to yeah. get out. This is it's a PR perspective. You want to get out in front of that before, <laughs> before it yeah, derails. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it is, it is funny because uh, I am making like a pro tips on, on the Twitter also. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, this, uh, this tweet compiles everything and somebody is reading that in the five seconds and they are like, yeah. Okay, and then I'm moving away. But it was like two hours for me to get to that place that, okay, this is how it is working. And uh, to make uh, for some people life easier, I think it is nice and benefiting for myself. So it is a guilty pleasure in some sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's why it's, I, I think it's key. I think we all tend to do this, but I find certain sources voices that I, I like. There's there's certain, like in the office apps and services world, I have certain go-to blogs. I have certain you know, experts, fellow MVPs that I turn to for answers to things because I, I, I know the, like the voice, I know the quality of the content and the solutions they provide. And also something that I'm very preferential. I know that they're all approachable if I see something that's wrong or have questions about something that they've shared and I can, will interact with them. So it's, that's another, I guess, piece of guidance that I have is like, find those experts and especially MVPs, don't be shy yeah. about reaching out to us. I mean, I, that's, that's another thing, which I, I don't even have to know you to know that because you're an MVP, that you're kind of a you know, connector personality and that you're open to people out in the community that you don't know, that see a video, that read a blog post, reach out and connect with you. Have you had those yeah. kinds of interactions as well? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Because uh, I have a couple, couple of uh, the cases uh, like that, that somebody was approaching me or I was uh, approaching the MVPs. And uh, to be honest, I was never uh, let down uh, with the like uh, ignorance or uh, lack of of the response, and a uh, couple of the of the people which I meet along the lines, I'm still in in touch. So we are exchanging some uh, some thoughts and asking this uh, more uh, technical questions from uh, time to time. And uh, this is funny that uh, the label of the MVP can discourage some people uh, in some sense but it should encourage people to approach us because uh, part of our like uh, lifestyle is, is sharing and, and yep. helping. I think this is the, the most value uh, which I see in, uh, in like this networking. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, I, I know that we're just over time here. Really appreciate uh, the, the time you've given. For people that wanna find out more about you or get in touch with you, what are the best ways to find you and connect with you? Yeah, so I was mentioning my blog. Uh, this is the 365corner.pl. At Twitter, you can also find me at the 365corner, uh, uh, David. And through the LinkedIn, if you will type in uh, David Dash Zhukowski, then you will also find me. So through all of the socials, you can find me without a lot of troubles. <laughs> Excellent. And I will, of course, have this episode up on my blog, and I'll have the links to all of uh, David's uh, contact information as well but really appreciate your time. Hopefully I'll see you next spring if we do the MVP summit uh, over stateside. Yeah, I hope to, to go there. Uh, I need to start to speak with my wife. I'm sure that you hear my kids. Mm. <laughs> so it is not easy, but I want to travel and I want to meet so many people which I meet virt virtually uh, in person. I think that it will be the experience of my lifetime. <laughs> yeah, I, I always I tell every new MVP, it's the uh, it's one of the, the the biggest perks is that the chance to uh, to to get to to see all of the other MVPs and of course the the Microsoft the product teams and uh, it's just it's a it's a great learning uh, event and uh, uh, just a great way to connect. But uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully see you soon. Talk to you soon anyway. Yeah, thank you for having me. See you soon.